Have you ever thought how small decisions made by a company can have a big impact on the future position of that company? Blockbuster was one of the biggest companies at one time, and it fell victim to a series of bad decisions made over time. Before we look at the reasons that led to the bankruptcy of Blockbuster, let's get to know the company a little more. Blockbuster was founded by David Cook in 1985, and it was one of the largest and most successful companies of its time engaged in the rental of movies, video games, tapes, and DVDs. In particular, the company, which had its heyday in the late 1990s and early 2000s, began to experience a severe decline after 2004. With more than 9,000 stores in 25 countries in 2004, more than 84,000 employees, and a valuation of nearly $6 billion, this giant company had only one store and three employees as of the latest 2019 data. But what were the reasons that led to the bankruptcy of Blockbuster? Many people think that the Netflix platform was the reason for the company's bankruptcy. But let's get a better picture by examining the history of the company and the decisions it made. Exactly 24 years ago in 1998, Warner Brothers, the maker of hundreds of popular movies like Batman, Superman, Harry Potter, and more, offered to sell DVDs of its movies at Blockbuster before other stores. But John Antioco, the CEO of Blockbuster at the time, rejected this huge offer thinking that only a small percentage of people still play DVDs, and as a result, one of the main competitors, Walmart, took advantage of the opportunity to buy and sell DVDs at a cheaper price. Yes, at a cheaper price, but when they sold DVDs cheaply, they made huge profits from the DVD players and TVs they sold alongside. Blockbuster's mistake, which Netflix also made, cost them both a lot. On top of that, Netflix, not as popular as it is now, offered to join forces by selling themselves to Blockbuster for $50 million. But John Antioco just laughed at the offer and agreed with a company called Enron to create their own Netflix online DVD rental platform. But shortly after the deal, Enron went bankrupt, and as a result, Blockbuster's millions went to waste. Two years later, in 2002, seeing Netflix booming, Blockbuster tried again to create the same type of platform, and this time it was successful thus gaining millions of users in a short period of time. However, this rapid growth stopped at one point, as Netflix provided better service in online DVD rentals. Blockbuster, despite having a number of chances, couldn't turn them into an advantage. For example, even though the company had stores close to 90% of the American population, online rentals and in-store sales were not linked. Specifically, buyers had to return mailed DVDs by mail. However, it clearly would have been more convenient for people to go to the nearest store and return it. In addition, to keep up with the competition, those who rented DVDs online from Blockbuster could get a second one for free when they returned the DVD. In addition, he canceled the fines applied for the timely return of the rented products and won the favor of customers by using a different method. But by this time, franchise problems plagued Blockbuster. Because of the freedom given to franchises, they could impose whatever decisions they wanted on prices and fines. The final blow was delivered by the next CEO of the company, James Keyes. He also turned down another lucrative offer from Netflix during his tenure at Blockbuster. Networks put forward the idea that DVD rentals from them could be returned at a Blockbuster store, which would positively impact Blockbuster's sales. In addition, James Keyes had raised the price of subscriptions for online rentals and concealed the second DVD-free campaign for those who rent the first. After all these events in 2010, the once-rival Blockbuster officially declared bankruptcy, and the remaining 1,700 stores were acquired by a company called Dish Network. Not long after that, in 2013, stores operating under the Dish Network name also went bankrupt and the last company-affiliated store closed in 2014. Currently, there's only one store operated by a franchisee in Bend, Oregon, in America, under the name Blockbuster. The reason for this failure was a series of wrong decisions made by the Blockbuster board, not Netflix or other companies. If we look at the strategy followed by the Blockbuster company, we see that the steps taken brought them a lot of income in a short period of time. But the total access campaign, which could bring profit in the long run, was canceled with the arrival of a new CEO. The total access campaign meant the chance to get a second DVD for free when returning DVDs rented online. In addition, 
The inability to have a say over the franchisees is a result of the company's laws and strategies not being carefully prepared when Blockbuster was founded. Keeping all this in mind, we can say with confidence that when we consider an issue, we should consider every detail and think about what results we will get not only in the short term, but in the long term. Otherwise, a result similar to Blockbuster is inevitable.